Awesome. What's up, everyone? Thanks for staying tuned in. Uh, today is December 6th at 2.40 p.m. Occasionally, uh, we are only 10 minutes uh, behind schedule. That's uh, an improvement from our end. Hey, Zeno, how you doing? Long time no see. Hi, Fred. It's nice to be back here with you, and I'm doing fine. Thanks. We're excited to have you. Uh, we did an interview for you guys who don't know on the, on the channel. You guys, uh, we did an interview with uh, Little Green Man Game about a year ago now. Uh, is on Starpoint Gemini 2, the original game. Uh, we talked to Zeno Zokaj, uh, who you have here on webcam today again. And this time we're going to talk about Titans, the DLC for the game. Before we even get there, Zeno, let's start with an introduction on the original game itself for the people in chat who are not yet familiar with the game. Zeno, this is a bit of a repeat for us since we already did the interview about the game last year, but please be kind enough to give us a short introduction on its origins. What is Starpoint Gemini 2 all about? Well, uh, Starpoint Gemini 2 is uh, basically an open space uh, tactical combat game with RPG elements. Uh, so you can uh, roam around freely or go through the campaign. Uh, you're not forced to do any of, of those choices. You can either skip the campaign completely and go directly uh, to, to free roam. And uh, you can be whatever you want to be, a pirate, a miner, a trader. You can do freelance or side missions. Uh, so the game as itself does not end in any way. We have people in community that have over 2,000 hours in the game. So basically, there is no end credits and game over. So It's kind of like an MMO without the online concept, uh, without the, the competitive online features. Yeah, uh, some people in community uh, compared us to EVE Offline, as I right. mentioned in our previous interview, because yeah. uh, those games are similar in terms of uh, gameplay, uh, the, the third-person uh, camera view on your ship. Uh, but of course, there is a main difference if it's PvP and it's exclusively multiplayer game, while Star and Gemini is exclusively single-player game. Yeah, can you share some uh, some about the meaning behind the name Starpoint Gemini 2, if, if that's not a major spoiler to those who have yet to play the game? Uh, no, no, it's not a spoiler. Uh, the Gemini universe uh, is called the Gemini because it has two sons, Castor and Pollux, so hence the name uh, Gemini. And Starpoint uh, is a big, let us say, some kind of stargate in the universe where uh, the Empire in the, the past uh, came in and uh, there was a war and there is a story around that star point and the meaning of that star point in Gemini universe. And as I said, Gemini is for twin suns, twin sun system. And the story originates in the very first title. Do you need to play the first title to actually catch up to the story in the second one? Or when you start the second one, you, it's pretty much as if you started from fresh from a story standpoint. <laughs> Uh, it's fresh from the story stand, uh, standpoint because uh, there are things that happened in the first start in Gemini, uh, but you won't miss on anything uh, if you just start start in Gemini do, uh, 2 because it's another new captain, uh, some new characters, uh, some old characters uh, from the, 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 the original. But um, well, we uh, actually released uh, the Origins uh, DLC, uh, which is something the community asked about. And it's basically uh, the full Starpoint Gemini 1 original campaign ported into the Starpoint Gemini 2 engine. So okay. uh, when you get the game uh, today on Steam, you uh, will also get free Origins DLC because we didn't want to charge for that because we felt as a team that we would be double charging the same uh, product. It's still the first game, same voiceover, same story, just ported to the new engine. And yeah, it was uh, time consuming, but uh, people really received it very well. Okay, awesome. Before we move on uh, to the actual DLC, one final question on the original game. Surfing your website, I actually realized that Starpoint Gemini 2 was open to modding. And I did not know that in the original interview we did. How active of a modding community do you guys have? Uh, we're always interested in that. What, what have modders achieved for developing the game so far? 
uh, well, Startup and Gemini, original Startup and Gemini was also open to modding, and there were some fantastic mods, uh, uh, even complete uh, conversions. Uh, we have Star Trek conversion mod for Startup and Gemini 1, uh, with Romulans, uh, with Klingons, with the whole Star Trek universe, and ships, and everything is there. And uh, we continued uh, with that policy in Startup and Gemini 2, so uh, actually, uh, modders are very active active in uh, our community. It's uh, exclusive um, to Steam because Steam uh, has a workshop which makes it easier for modders to publish their works. And uh, we have also for Startup and Gemini 2 in modding community uh, from smaller mods that just basically double your cargo space or your speed to complete conversions. Uh, we had uh, Star Wars conversion, uh, all planets were renamed, uh, enemies were renamed, ships were renamed. Uh, music was completely cut out the original That's Star awesome. Wars music and complete Star, uh, Star Wars uh, sound soundtrack was put in there so uh, yeah a modern community is fantastic it's active really yeah fantastic. and you yeah. guys have I'm, I'm sure there's ongoing communication between the dev teams and the modders that you know the best guys uh, you of guys course. know uh, and they're actively engaged in the development process did, 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 in, in some ways would you say that the features that these modders have brought to the game have uh, recreated the game and maybe even perhaps taking the game, the game to a direction that the devs wouldn't have expected or anticipated, maybe even wanted? Or, or would you say that actually the modders have consistently been in line with, with the developers as far as the vision, uh, the vision of the game and where you guys wanted to go with it? Uh, well, uh, we definitely wanted it. Uh, that was the reason why we went to early access. Uh, we wanted to, to hear the suggestions and feedback from the community. And um, they actually um, suggested so many uh, good ideas that we... Uh, uh, scratched some of our own ideas because uh, that's, their ideas that's, were, were that's better. That's great. Yeah. I love yeah. to hear that stuff. So, so some, some features that are uh, in today's game are were not originally planned uh, and they were direct uh, feedback from the community like uh, I don't know fire at will option uh, where you can micromanage your ship and uh, let the, the, the ship's crew uh, manage the, the turrets uh, to hunger mode uh, or garage, uh, as we call it in the game, uh, because people wanted to collect their ships. So we implemented that. So many of uh, many of the features in current version of the game are actually community uh, suggestions or requests. Uh, and so is Origins DLC, and so is basically Titans DLC, because uh, Titans were not originally planned. It's something the community asks us uh, to do. They wanted Titans class uh, huge ships huge beasts and do you guys do you guys have some sort of vetting process for what gets implemented and downloaded uh, as an extension to your game because it's always a concern uh, I personally have as a gamer uh, when I go into modding is uh, how, what does a studio what's the process for a studio uh, from yours all the way to Bethesda and its game fallout what's what kind of process does the industry have to make sure that whatever gets added to the game is is, uh, is going to be beneficial to the gamer's experience and not detrimental, if any process. Uh, well, we do not uh, have a wetting, uh, uh, some kind of, uh, I don't know, elections of ideas or something like that, but uh, we actually talk to people on forums and we are very active on forums uh, on a daily basis. And uh, when people suggest something, uh, you get uh, many responses in a short amount of time. And and uh, if it's a good idea, uh, and if everybody supports it, we just put it in. Uh, so basically, of course, there are some things that we cannot put uh, due to technical reasons or, um, I don't know, uh, some things will uh, be in next project that were suggested in the, uh, by the community in the past uh, two years. Uh, but whatever we could have implemented and uh, the community supported it, we did. So, okay. But you guys can always say no if you feel like this is not going to be good for the game. Uh, yes, but we, uh, if we say no to something, uh, we actually try to explain why not. Uh, yeah. Is it a technical uh, problem to, to, to implement or... Uh, I mean, we, uh, all ideas that were supported by the community wholeheartedly uh, made their way into the game. Uh, if not, uh, for 
I don't know, technical reasons or something, they will make their way uh, into the, the, the world's uh, project. So uh, basically, if the idea is good, it will come uh, to the game. Okay. Because th those two people are playing our game, are talking with us, and uh, they're leaving uh, this project together with us. So uh, they don't have actually uh, bad ideas. They have uh, um, ideas that can be easier or harder to implement, uh, but all of those ideas are mostly very, very good. Of course. Okay, so before we get into the game, I want to tell people in chat to please ask questions. We're going to try, try and do a short Q&A at the end of the interview. And Zeno was very, very kind to donate a few Steam keys for the original game itself, as well as the DLC. So you'll be able to play the original game. On top of that, get the free DLC. So ask your questions. We'll be picking them up as we go. And without any further delay, we're going to get straight into Titan. The, the second DLC for Starpoint Gemini 2. Um, we're here to discuss this release. Now I'm going to start with the basic intro. Anyone can get on the Steam page really. It's a bit lengthy, so I ask you to bear with me. Uh, but I'm going to read it. Uh, an arms race is taking place in Gemini. The three largest factions are racing to develop true weapons of mass destruction, the massive Titan class vessels. The Democrat Core Kira is producing a Titan class vessel that is based on the latest shield technology and will Belder Baroness, I hope I pronounced that correctly, are united together in an effort to quickly produce a space behemoth that can land on a strong punch. The Nixian Consortium used its informants and monetary wealth wisely and is able to quickly join the race by taking what is not theirs, a Titan class sized vessel based on Imperial Leviathan designs. Join one of the factions in their worthy attempt and become the deciding factor welcome to project titan so that's pretty exciting zeno uh, this is all very exciting it's, it's very specific i love the intro and i like to talk about who writes this type of stuff because uh, it goes in depth and immediate, immediately even if you don't know the game you're kind of feeling immersed into this universe and you get the impression that there's a lot to discover just by uh, how deep it goes into the lores the names that you pull out uh, can you give us a bit of an exclusive and build on this intro what what are we to expect here uh, well first of all uh, hi to Mario who is with us uh, in chat as I can see awesome thank you Mario uh, as for the story the story uh, Mario usually writes the stories but uh, this one um, if I remember correctly was written by our uh, scripture guys and um, as I said Titans were uh, a community request and uh, we didn't want to just uh, make and model uh, four big uh, ships and just throw them to the game. We wanted to, to do some kind of story behind them. And uh, as you have read in this intro, uh, it's basically four different uh, Titan ships. Uh, you cannot have all four of them. You have to uh, decide uh, which of these factions uh, best suit your interests and uh, then you will get a storyline for that Titan, and at the end of the storyline, uh, it's not a, a, a very long storyline, it's like five or six missions uh, for each Titan, uh, but after the storyline you will get your Titan ship. Uh, but the game doesn't end there, uh, now you just acquired your new uh, um, badass ship, so now it's time to, to wreak havoc uh, in the galaxy, and first of all to uh, equip the ship, because uh, the turrets uh, and equipment for Titan class ship uh, are very expensive. So even when you get the ship, it will take some time uh, uh, to get enough money to, to pimp it up. So, but it kind of, the expansion itself, if you're getting your own Titan ship, does it also mean that technically everybody, no, no matter how many hours you've played in the former expansion, it kind of sets a reset point where everybody starts on the same footing? Well, no, you just uh, build up uh, on it uh, because it's a single player game. Uh, so in the multiplayer, right. uh, this this could be a problem uh, that people who bought the Titans DLC will be um, invulnerable and, and invincible in, in space. Uh, but since this is a single player game, since this is the game that was shaped by your play, 
through your first 80 levels. Uh, it actually just builds on the end game. Uh, so uh, I don't think right. uh, we did uh, pay attention for the balance of the game. So uh, yes, uh, you will uh, be strong with Titan ship in the galaxy now, but uh, you also have uh, new enemies. Uh, you have veterans and heroes that are also in Titan ships. So uh, taking them down uh, will still be challenging and require uh, a lot of skills. Okay, from a story standpoint, uh, just to kind of stay on that topic, this is the second DLC, uh, the first one being Secrets of Ethera. Uh, third, actually. Yeah, I'm sorry. Uh, yeah, first, uh, first was Secrets of Ethera, that was a paid DLC, which introduced a uh, new station, new ship classes, new ships, new events, uh, new storyline, uh, um, new equipment, uh, customizable uh, uh, beam weapon, and uh, stuff like that. And then we released uh, Origins. So Origins which was a free is, DLC. Yeah, it's actually almost twice as big as uh, Star Trek Gemini 2 campaign. So I think that's one of the, it's definitely one of the biggest DLCs, free DLCs ever uh, released. Nice. And, uh, is, there, is there a reason why you guys wanted to make that one free specifically, not to keep, not to get us off track the topic, but... Quickly. Yeah, as I said, as I said, we as a team felt uh, that charging for Origins would be uh, like double charging the original game because okay. we didn't implement. It was uh, like three or four months it took us to to make the to port the the Star Trek Gemini One, uh, but still it's Star Trek Gemini One, and charging for it uh, seemed like double charging. And yeah, it makes felt sense. It was not something we want to do, so we released it uh, uh, for free. And Titans is also a paid DLC, and uh, it will be the last DLC for Star Trek Gemini Two, and it kind of rounded the story up with those beasts and uh, extra uh, extra gameplay time that people can experience with those ships now. So how big of a DLC is Titans in comparison to the second one? Well, uh, in comparison to the Origins, uh, it's small because Origins is complete campaign. Uh, in comparison uh, to Secrets of Terra, it's smaller, but it's also different. Uh, Secrets of Terra will add to the game uh, and you will get some new ships, but uh, nothing as big as uh, Titan ships. Uh, and uh, Titans are an optional content, so you can play your game uh, without Titans uh, DLC, which means that you won't get enemies that are in Titans class ships if you don't have Titans DLC. So uh, the balance will not be uh, broken or, or anything. And when you get Titans DLC, then you will automatically have Titan enemies. So. It's it also, just brings I, I, another. It just expands on the game, and it's an optional. Uh, and it's an optional. Let's say like a side mission. It's not part of the main campaign. It doesn't uh, changes the the the, the big uh, events in the in the Gemini uh, as such. Okay, and I think it's this 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 this, this specific DLC is also somewhat uh, different from the other ones in the sense that it's a stepping stone to the next big project for the studio, which is. Warlords, and we're going to close on that. So I'm not going to, I'm not going to cover this now. How long uh, has the, the, this DLC Titans been in the making? How long have you guys been working on this? Uh, we have been talking about it for more than a year because that's when the people first time ask for it. Um, and we were not sure if we will be able to do it because of the uh, working on the Xbox One port and uh, uh, Warlords, uh, which will go to, to early access soon. Uh, but we basically decided, well, uh, to hell with it, let's do Titans, people want Titans. Uh, it took us uh, a few months uh, and with testing and developing and uh, modeling the ships. Uh, but I think it was worth it. Uh, people received it very well because uh, that's something they wanted. We didn't push any any kind of our ideas or content uh, on them. Uh, we actually implemented what they wanted. So, I see a few questions in the chat, and I thank you guys for it. Keep asking them because we'll be uh, we'll be picking them up and answering uh, the Q and A and distributing some game keys again that Zeno generously donated. Uh, Zeno. Are you so you guys are not changing? I think you said you guys are not changing the basic mechanics of the game. Yet at the same time, t Titans are a new kind of ships. Uh, they they bring a whole a whole new way of approaching space. Obviously, something that j 
just the name itself, Titans, brings some epic pro proportions to an already epic game because uh, if you haven't played Starpoint Gemini 2, I recommend you do. It's a very, uh, it's an overwhelming sensation of both loneliness for some long uh, spaces of time where you're doing all this traveling and just having your moment with space and suddenly here comes the pulse, the attacks. Uh, that's this, It's a great game. I, I really like how you guys play with dynamics. Uh, it's, a, it's powerful stuff, but Titans brings a kind of a whole di dimension to the game that's uh, you guys are you guys are saying this is going to be big and to, to to people who might not be playing it immediately you hear the name Titans it comes with expectations so what is it about those ships what can you tell us about those ships what's a Titan uh, Titan is a class of the ship. Uh, we have four Titans seen in the game that are available uh, through their uh, storylines. And uh, the Titan ship is like four times bigger than the biggest ship we had so far. And that's the Dreadnought class. And those ships are huge. And Titans wow. are like three to four times uh, bigger than that. And you can really see the scale when, when uh, Dreadnought passes you uh, in your Titan, you That's can awesome. see how small it is. And before, everything compared to Dreadnought was like this small, like a centimeter on the screen. It was funny. Uh, so, Titans uh, do bring uh, more micromanagement uh, in terms of uh, more turrets, uh, uh, more stuff to care for. Uh, but we did not change uh, the basic uh, game mechanics. Uh, it's still micromanagement of your firing arcs, of your shields, of your uh, distribution. Uh, energy to, to weapon shields or uh, engines uh, when needed, uh, managing your fighters that are deployed and they're uh, fighting for you, equipment uh, like automated turrets, um, uh, T-drive, stuff like that. And actually, it's just expanding on the game. It doesn't change uh, uh, the game in a way that it uh, breaks the me mechanic or... Uh, implements a new features or something like that. But it does, it must alter the gameplay uh, at least to some extent, does it not? Well, yeah, because uh, you do have the sense of uh, the, sheer, the sheer size of that thing uh, is amazing. So uh, you do uh, feel more powerful uh, in that ship and more secure. Uh, to be honest, because everything that uh, yeah. uh, attacks you now uh, are like flies. Um, except when you are meet, uh, meeting uh, the veteran uh, in another uh, Titan vessel, and then you have an epic uh, battles between, well, let's say the Clash of the Titans. Sure. From a design standpoint, did that create some challenges as far as the structure of space itself to keep the game challenging? If suddenly you're going to become this um, oversized machine uh, throwing yourself into space, did you guys, uh, as a development team, ask yourself the questions, okay, but how do we keep things in proportion? How do we keep the game a, a challenging adventure? Were these some issues that were raised and how did you, how did you deal with that? Uh, well, scaling was challenging. So, uh, how do we make a new ship that is three to four times bigger and uh, still have uh, the Dreadnought class not look like uh, uh, a fly or mosquito right. or something like that? And uh, they don't. They still look uh, cool uh, compared to Titans, but Titans are way cooler. Uh, and Titans were meant to be overpowered. Uh, it's end game content. Uh, Getting Titans uh, will require you to uh, finish the campaign, uh, do many, many uh, freelance missions, side missions, uh, learn and master the, the, the game mechanics. So um, Titans are like some kind of reward to the players who, who stayed with us so long, who stayed with the game so long. And uh, yes, uh, Titans will be a bit overpowered in terms of uh, battling one or two ships. And that's uh, okay. Yeah, but still, when you come to close to the um, uh, Gemini Suns, uh, there are so many dreadnoughts there that you get ganked. So even a Titan class ship has shields 
that can be drained, uh, has hull that can be damaged, and you can be destroyed. I tried it. I was cocky. I went to the two sons <laughs> because I said I will kick everybody's ass, and I got kicked. Uh, yeah, it took them like seven or eight minutes to, to kill me, uh, but they did kill me. So it's still challenging. It's not that you can just uh, put fire at will and... Uh, go to the cinema and when you come back uh, the, the, the the space the universe is dead around you so no it's it, it still doesn't work like that it's a bit overpowered and it's some kind of a reward to our players uh, which idea originally Titans uh, were and uh, but it can still be challenging it does not break the gameplay in that way it would uh, break the gameplay if you somehow acquire the Titan on level one. On everyone, yeah, but that's another yeah, case. Yeah, of course. Then you just uh, walk through through the campaign and everything. But but since it's an end game, uh, end game content, uh, it will not break the game you play before that. As a new player, how long would it take you to acquire the ship? Well, as a new player, um, you, you won't be able to acquire the Titan. Why? Because uh, you can be a new player. So for Titans DLC, you need to, to be a specific level, a higher level, which means uh, you cannot be a new player. You have at least 50 or more hours in the game. Of gameplay. Uh, you finish, yeah, of course. And you, you finish the gameplay. You got some money. You got uh, better, better weapons. Because... Uh, in the process and storyline uh, for acquiring Titans, uh, those missions are hard and they're challenging. And uh, you cannot just come there with your starting ship, uh, kill everybody and uh, take the Titan. So it's a chain quest to, to obtain a Titan ship and uh, it's a chain quest of missions that are not uh, that easy, especially if you're a lower level. Thank you. Worst gear or something. And I want to share the comment that Mario did. Mario, uh, I believe the main developer of the game. Is that correct, Starpoint? Uh, is that correct, Zeno? Yeah, yeah. And uh, CEO of the LGM Games. Uh, so Mario, CEO, of course. So uh, he personally, the CEO of the company, uh, personally succeeded to beat Titan Hero Unit only once and perished miserably dozens of times. So there it is. It's historically recorded because the, our interview is going on YouTube and iTunes. And I wanted to make sure that that wouldn't only stay in the Twitch chat. Uh, moving forward, what about feedback, Zeno? Uh, how is the community res responding to the DLC? What is criticized? What's, what's being enjoyed? Well, well as I said, uh, the feedback is fantastic because uh, that's actually something uh, people wanted and asked us to do, and we delivered. So, first of all, uh, they're happy we, we held our promise, and we actually uh, listened to them and uh, developed Titans DLC, which is something they uh, wanted for some time now. Uh, second of all, uh, what is criticized, uh, well, I'm living, literally living on Steam and uh, listening, uh, reading the comments, talking to people. I cannot recall anything that they uh, specifically criticized about the, the Titan DLC. Uh, what is enjoyed? Uh, well, everything else, because as I said, that's something they wanted. They just... It was, a it was a response to the community, so it was it was hard to get anything negative about it. Yeah, of course, because uh, the whole titles were made uh, based on them, so... And it was a great idea. I'm glad uh, they, they suggested it, and I'm glad uh, that we've been able to, to develop it and uh, release it in the end. Okay, well, uh, that's... It's, it's, it really nice nicely rounds up the whole game. Uh, yeah, and that's what I'm getting. The start, which is uh, slower and, uh, as I said in the last interview, medically approved uh, when we said yeah. about flexing, uh, roaming through space. <laughs> and it now epically uh, rounds you it with epic ships, uh, with uh, which you can do epic uh, battles and uh, kick ass, basically, in the galaxy. That's awesome. Okay, so uh, moving on to a conversation that many people want to have, and I don't know uh, how, how much you can disclose. Uh, another interesting note from the Steam page at the very bottom is that Titans gives us a small taste of what Starpoint Gemini Warlords, your next big project, is trying to achieve. Obviously, that's going to raise questions. We already know about Fitch. We're going to start with that. Uh, from the from the web page, the announcement, uh, we, we've heard a few things about headquarters, territorial conquests, and researching weapon enhancements. So can you kind of walk us through those features, giving us perhaps a little bit more than, than what we have on the website? Sure. 
Uh, well, let's start with the beginning. Uh, Startup and Gemini Warlords uh, is basically a community requests game. I don't know how to put it differently because everything that we wanted to put in the Startup and Gemini 2 and we couldn't because of the sheer size of those ideas or, or complexity, technical complexity of implementing it, uh, we actually uh, put all those uh, things to a wish list. We said what we can do, what we can do, and we decided to make a uh, a spin off game which will be Starp and Gemini Warlords, which will implement all those things. So, people said we want bigger space. Uh, we said <laughs> Mario, <is laughs> I see that. <laughs> Remember the NDA, Mar Zeno. Well, this is something I was talking about on Gamescom. So, um, people wanted a bigger space, so we said, okay, it will be bigger and it will be like nine times bigger. Um, uh, people wow. said, yeah, it will be really That's big. Cool. Uh, People said uh, they want uh, to be able, uh, of course, to store their ships, they will still uh, be able to do that. Uh, people wanted uh, to, to uh, conquer parts of the universe. So we basically said, okay, no problem, you will get headquarters, uh, you will have uh, modules with which you will uh, slowly develop that uh, headquarters and you will have a fleet that you will need uh, to conquer parts of the universe. And you will be, of course, the warlord, hence the name warlords, because there will be other warlords in the universe that you will, uh, either through diplomacy or uh, combat or anything, uh, you will talk to them, you will maybe decide not to kill them if they decide not to kill you and stuff like that. So you will expand in the universe L and uh, unlike uh, Star Point Gemini 2, we actually expanded on it and you will have the, 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 the feeling that you are really uh, an a power in the universe and uh, that your actions uh, have consequences in on the universe itself and you will see it shape according to your actions uh, in the game an expansionist but still still a game that's going to be played offline it's still a single player experience mm -hmm. you guys did not want to move away from that uh, no, no, because uh, the problem, uh, first of all, uh, we never uh, had uh, the people ask us uh, to do a PvP MMO large scale game. Uh, the only thing that people would like to see is uh, some kind of co-op uh, co mode where they could uh, sure. get one or two friends and go through the campaign, uh, play together, uh, kill stuff and uh, loot stuff and enjoy it. Uh, so uh, basically that's something that we're still thinking about but uh, there is a technical uh, problem with making a, a multiplayer component uh, you need to have a network infrastructure you need to have 24/7 uh, maintenance and and support and since there are like uh, 10 to 12 of us in the team um, and we are in Croatia which means uh, since 80% of our uh, market are players from the USA uh, that means that their prime time of playing is uh, when we are yeah practicing when you guys are yeah, yeah when you guys are resting yeah so uh so, so uh, for now we put in a halt, but it's not something that we decline to do or anything. It's just something that we cannot uh, do at this time. Uh, okay. But we're definitely still talking about it, and uh, it's still in our head uh, in some later project, perhaps. Okay. And when it comes to the team, you you say there's quite a few of you guys uh, working on Warlords. Did you grow the team? Did you bring some new faces to the studio to to get the project moving and to make it uh, much bigger than than the Start on Gemini 2? Uh, not much bigger, uh, but um, actually, uh, Start on Gemini 1, original Start on Gemini, was made with uh, Mario, his two brothers, and uh, one extra guy, and it was an uh, enthusiastic project, learning experience. Uh, but in the, in the end, it uh, it earned enough to to uh, become a daily job. So making games is now a daily job, not just for for Mario and and uh, his brothers, uh, but they're the core team. Uh, but also for every everybody else who who joined uh, the LGM. Uh, we are like uh, twelve of us now. I think Mario Mario will know the exact number. Uh, but yeah, we're slowly growing, and that's a good thing. That means that uh, we are 
doing the good job and uh, the game uh, is being well received and uh, that allows us to uh, to, con to continue to develop uh, not just Star Con Gemini 2 but also the new project and and you uh, guys are keeping the entire team in Croatia correct you're not yes, spinning it yes. between studios across Europe this is a yeah. Croatian this is a Croatian thing and it's going to stay a Croatian thing do you guys take pride yes. in that do you want to uh, advertise for the Croatian uh, market uh, well, a Croatian market is not a large one, uh, not just for our game, but for any game. Uh, it's a small market. Uh, but uh, we had a few, a few occasional, uh, as Mario said in the chat, we, we had a few occasional freelancers from other countries, and we do not have anything against uh, people from other countries. No, no, I wasn't. I wasn't even but, implying that. Yeah, but we were, we were lucky enough to to be able to manage and to to assemble a team of uh, professionals in Croatia that are located in Zagreb. I'm the old, only one that's dislocated in the other city, but uh, as I said, we can <laughs> I can work uh, with an internet and that's everything I need. No, I, I think that's awesome. So how long has the project been in the making? Uh, how long have you guys uh, had your, your developing fingers on Warlords? Uh, well, Warlords are still in... They're not in pre-production. We started uh, doing some things and implementing some things in the world, but it's not in early access yet. Uh, uh, but it was on hold uh, for a time being because we needed to to do a port of Starpoint Gemini 2 for Xbox because Microsoft approached us about that. And we had to, to develop the Titans and we wanted to run the game with the Titans DLC. Uh, so now we are actually fully focused on... Uh, fully focused on uh, Warlords project, and uh, I think we will be able to to release it in the first quarter next year. The early access. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because early access is, uh, if you ask me, the only way to go. Uh, what does it mean, the... early access, for you guys? What does it mean? It means that the game is in development, has a lot of bugs, uh, has a lot of testing. It's got a short life. You still have very much to do. Or is early access for you guys very much a polished product that you're delivering to your community to get their feedback? Yeah, uh, well, uh, for Erkan Kazas, who is in the chat, I just have to say, he said that he loves Crow Team, and <laughs> he can be jealous on my uh, Serious Sam t-shirt. Uh, as for the project, uh, Early Access uh, was something that was um, in the making uh, when we first entered. We were, we were one of the first teams that entered Early Access uh, oh. as new Steam Steam. Uh, pet project and uh, it's something that we want to do again uh, of course it depends on community uh, since uh, our community is more mature community and we have people that are mostly over 30 and we have people that are 75 years old uh, with that kind of community you have people that are patient uh, that are helpful uh, that are kind uh, that have uh, fantastic ideas and suggestions at uh, and they really contributed uh, to making and shaping the game as it is today uh, of course it will be different if we were making a Call of Duty game. Uh, the, the younger generations would be more impatient, uh, maybe bothered by bugs and just uh, uh, trash the game uh, because of it. Uh, so we were blessed with our community, that's for one. And uh, the sheer amount of ideas and and uh, the, the brilliance uh, of uh, ideas we gave, uh, got in the early access uh, is something that we cannot... Uh, even start to describe. Uh, as I said, many features in the current game are community suggestions. So yes, we want to do that again. Uh, although Star and Gemini Warlords itself is a community requested game and uh, full of community requested features, we still want people uh, to try it and uh, to help us shape the game. Uh, unfortunately, early access is not what it was uh, when it first came out. Uh, it was a proof of concept before, and you could come with uh, uh, with an empty space and one ship and uh, uh, it would be a proof of concept where, where people would say, oh, this has potential, I will support that. Uh, yeah. 
now, unfortunately, if you uh, release a game that is like 20 or 30 percent uh, done, you will get uh, you will get trashed with negative reviews, and uh, the game will fail. Uh, you have to make uh, at least 70 to 80 percent of the project before even uh, thinking of entering early access. Uh, who is there to blame? I don't know. It's you, just you, you see you see this as something negative. Well, of course, because the early access was. As its name says, the early access, it was a proof of concept and uh, people could uh, help you and uh, leave uh, the project with you together day by day. We, uh, uh, we, impl uh, we released several uh, and published several uh, updates uh, per month, uh, sometimes per week. And uh, it was always something that the community said, oh, you have a bug here, you have a bug there, or uh, I think this one, uh, this feature would be better if it does uh, this or that. Uh, so they were actively contributing to making the game. And uh, when you have a 70% finished project, uh, it's still uh, very much possible, of course. But it would be nicer uh, to have people from almost from the start uh, to go slowly through that process with you. And of course, be rewarded with a good game in the end. Yeah, the game no, they all contributed to. I wish, uh, I, wish I, I wish you would have been there during the round table that we did just a couple of weeks ago because the early access and what's acceptable, what's not acceptable was very much at the center of the conversation. And, yeah, uh, I was listening to the Rise of the Indies episode too and they were talking about early access on Steam and how it works today. I don't know, uh, uh, AAA uh, studios sometimes uh, and started uh, to come to early access. Uh, first of all, AAA studios in early access is something that... Uh, Doesn't make I much cannot, sense. No, as a gamer, I cannot understand it. I mean, they're AAA, they have budget, they have people, they have testers. We don't have testers. I mean, we yeah. do have testers, but uh, uh, it's nicer and uh, it's uh, the bigger community to test uh, the game when we uh, open it to our players through the early access than to hire uh, students that will test our game uh, in, a, in our house, in, in the office. Uh, so basically, why AAA titles are uh, coming to early access? Uh, is it the... the, the do they want to charge the product or something else? I don't know. And is it a sa is it a, is it a safety blanket type of thing just to stay safe or two on the safe zone and say uh, to back up and it, the big questions. Um, I I also have another development question for you, Zeno, uh, on Titans. You're now releasing not just on PC but on consoles as well. So how are you developing the game? Uh, if it's going to go in early access, I'm imagine it. You guys are developing on the PC platform first and foremost and then uh, exporting uh, that to consoles or is it vice versa? Yeah, uh, so uh, basically Star Trek Gemini 2 was never meant to be on the consoles uh, because it was mainly a mouse and keyboard game uh, or people could use gamepads and we had partial controller support. Uh, but after Microsoft approached us uh, and asked us if we would like to port it uh, to Xbox One, we said, well, why not? Sure. And uh, it was so more challenging. It's a big we, market. It's a big yeah, market. Uh, and it was more challenging than we uh, originally thought it would be because uh, both Starcoin Gemini 2 uh, on Xbox and uh, on PC is in DirectX. So uh, the port itself was not a problem. The problem was uh, to redesign the whole user interface, the whole HUD, uh, to, to better accommodate uh, the Xbox One controller and to give the best possible experience to um, console players. And that took us like six months to do. And oh, wow. To tweak and to, to make it uh, intuitive and easy to, to grasp and so that was uh, that was the uh, most challenging part of the port. Uh, the port itself, as I said, is DirectX uh, left and right, you just port it, but redesigning the whole user interface was something uh, that we wanted to do because we wanted to give the best possible experience and it, uh, it happened to be very challenging. And you guys are happy with the end product? Uh, well, we are, and it's coming out in a few days. It's coming out on 11 uh, December. Awesome. Yeah, so it's like in five days. Should, should uh, be a big help for the studio. Yeah, and uh, we will see how well uh, the, the people will receive uh, the game. Uh, why am I saying that? Because there are no 
thing, uh, no games like Star from Germany 2 on uh, the Xbox. So basically, yeah. you have uh, Elite Dangerous, which is a completely different game. It's a first-person cockpit view flight simulator, uh, which is fantastic. And I'm playing Elite, and I love Elite and Frontier. But uh, Star from Germany 2 offers completely different experience, and there is no other game on the Xbox uh, like that. So that it's can mean two things. That can mean two things, uh, two things Fred. Uh, either that people on consoles do not want to play uh, this kind of uh, complex uh, space games, or that we are lucky that we are first, so it will be well received. So keep keep fingers crossed. Yeah, I mean, I'm going to keep my fingers crossed because I, I, uh, I don't think console gamers, and I'm not an expert or PC-centric, but I don't think console gamers uh, do not like, or the type of people who do not like space game, and I really think you do have an opportunity in that market. And it certainly isn't the case on PC as a platform. I mean, uh, Steam has so many games, and we, as a, as a price company, we see that weekly. Uh, there's always the space game coming coming out every week, and it's a, it's. I think it's it's uh, another pat on the back that I'm going to give you that Starpoint Gemini can get so many reviews, so many attention in such a competitive market. I think sp speaks a lot about the quality of your game, the breadth of your game, and, and what it represents uh, to PC gamers as a whole. I'm going to move on, Zeno, because I don't want to keep you too long to the last couple questions. If Mario sure. hasn't answered them, mainly from Erkan uh, uh, Ur Kazas, sorry if I misspell your name. Uh, when is Starpoint Gemini Warlords coming? Uh, you said that it was coming in fourth quarter of 2015, but I think it is moved to 2016. I think you yeah, Mario, ex Mario answered it, yeah. Uh, unfortunately, uh, because of the Titans and because of the Xbox One, um, as I said, it was more challenging than we intended to do, and we were delayed uh, because of that. So Warlords is a bit uh, late, uh, but it will, it will come in first quarter. Yeah. And uh, that's early access. When can you anticipate a full full blown product, polished and finished deliver uh, onto the Steam platform? Is that going to be in 2016, or are you guys really going to take your time on early access and get things together until you're perfectly happy with it? Well, Start from Gemini 2, when we first came to Early Access, was not supposed to be in the Early Access for uh, almost a year. Uh, but actually, Community is the one to blame. So Community is the one that actually uh, gave us new <laughs> ideas, uh, new suggestions, and we trashed some parts of the game and our ideas to implement their ideas and to test it. So everything was delayed because of uh, the sheer amount of community suggestions that we accepted and wanted to implement in the game. Uh, will it be the uh, same with Warlords? I don't think so, because Warlords uh, will come, uh, it will be more finished in the start uh, when, it came, uh, when it comes to Early Access than uh, Star Trek Gemini 2 was. And uh, so just for that reason, I don't think that we will be full for a full year in, in the early access. But uh, if we will, uh, it will be something that uh, the community will support because the only reason, as I said, uh, we were so long in the in the process of making Star Trek Germany do was because of the community had ideas and they contributed uh, to making the game. So uh, time will tell. Time will tell. Uh, it's not our intention to be uh, and to stall uh, the early access for, for a year or something. But as I said, we work closely uh, with our community and uh, you can never tell the exact time. Yes, we are coming to early access. I mean, uh, Star, uh, Star Wars Battlefront can do that because they can open yeah. the beta. And I don't know why, why why was it called beta. I was playing it. It was a finished game. It was yeah. fantastic. It's uh, playable. It's um, wow. Uh, but after five days, they just released the game. So what kind of beta is it? Yeah, yeah it's just, yeah. Um... It was just <laughs> agree with early, you. early preview yeah. or something to tickle me to buy it and, and build the hype. It's a marketing yeah, tool. Of so, so it was a marketing. Uh, when we said beta, it means there will be bugs, there will be uh, crashes, there will be funny, funny things that are happening, memory leaks, uh, stuff like that. But uh, we will try to to come uh, to this early access with a game that will be more polished. But you can polish the game when it's done, and when you have community that uh, on daily basis uh, gives you fantastic ideas and suggestions for the game you cannot polish it you you need to see what you, what can, what can you implement what you cannot implement and 
you have to make a cut at some point and say, okay, now we are polishing it. Nothing else comes in it uh, at this time. Because, you know, uh, one bug removed, you implement new stuff, 10 new bugs uh, just pop up somewhere. And you guys are developing this game on the same graphic engine? Uh, well, heavily modified. It's still on uh, well 2 engine, uh, but let's call it well 2.5 because it will be heavily modified and it will look better. Uh, scale will be different. And, That's uh, impressive because your game already looks great. Uh, yeah, and everything will, uh, will have more depth. Uh, not just uh, depth uh, in physical yeah, yeah. Uh, meaning, but also depth in storyline and yeah, it That's will be much, much bigger. We're definitely excited. As soon as you get into early access, we'd love to get you back on the Twitch channels and also that we can talk about it. We'll be playing it, obviously. I'm always glad to come back. Uh, I'm, g I'm glad you are certainly a good friend uh, thanks for all the support Zeno uh, any, any closing thoughts on the, on the game Starpoint Gemini 2 Titans Warlords uh, anything you want to add before we close the call well this was uh, uh, as I said in the community uh, on Steam and uh, even on Google Gamescom uh, this was a beautiful journey for me I mean uh, when we first came into early access I was helping Mario I was not uh, even part of the team I was just his friend and I was helping him with community and with answering the questions because I played the game and I loved it uh, and later I joined the team and uh, I'm proud to say that uh, I made some fantastic friends uh, in the community uh, through these two, two or more than two years uh, uh, from since the early access. So uh, the community is something that keeps us going uh, on, that uh, gives us uh, fresh ideas, that push pushes us uh, when we uh, not stall intentionally, but when we get to creative locate, somebody, somebody will come from them and uh, just pour out new ideas, new new concepts, uh, new suggestions, and uh, I hope that this journey will last for a long time. Not it's just Warlords, but also Starpoint Gemini 3 or anything else that we work on in the future. I think you, I think it will, and it's, it's great to hear uh, developers working primarily through Steam still have such a positive attitude about us gamers, because the internet can be a, a nasty place uh, with lots of uh, sometimes immature comments and just people not knowing uh, what you guys are going through from a development standpoint and that you do have the best interest of the community at heart or as you wouldn't be in the indie scene. Uh, we at Opinoobs believe that firmly. So it's great to hear so much positivity from developers and such a, a tight connection between you guys and the community and Zeno, not to toot your horn but uh, we, I, you're one of the first uh, you're one of the first industry professionals we've had the pleasure to talk to on Twitch and after you we've talked to dozens and dozens all great people but you still strike us as uh, one guy that we're very always happy to talk to you uh, keep the ego at the door and uh, we'll talk to anyone about anything when it comes to PC gaming and it's, you're just a, gr a great guy in, for, for the industry and, and for Opinoobs so we can't thank you enough Zeno for coming back here we'll be distributing those keys that he generously donated onto the main faces of the Twitch chat Stato will be doing this after the call I'd be sending him the, tea, the keys. So guys, stay tuned for your chance to get a key of Starpoint Gemini 2 and the DLC Titans. Check us out. We're opnoobs.com, PC Gaming by PC Gamers. We're a kind of a new community. We've been up and about for a year now. Uh, we're the, entire, uh, the entire production is brought to you by PC Gamers. We're on patreon.com. Please come and support us. Anything you want to do, you want to get involved, send me an email. I'm fred at opnoobs.com. We'll get you started whether you want to write whether you want to stream podcasts or just have fun uh, that's what we're all about Zeno thanks again we'll be closing the call we're going to wave to the channel and uh, guys we'll, we'll get back to you in uh, hopefully first quarter of 2016 to talk about the, uh, the big next project Warlords thanks Mario for tuning into our chat you guys are a great studio you do great stuff we're big fans so anytime we can support we'll be there thank you everybody and have a great thank night you. And looking forward to Warlords uh, live Twitch. Same, same here. Absolutely yeah. so. Bye, bye, guys. Bye, guys. Thank you.